Um, tell me a little bit about today's meeting, like how it went, because I have a feeling that it was a little bit different. I've had a lot of students and some parents tell me that it was very intense. There was some hostility, all of that. Today's meeting was scheduled for the students. We scheduled a meeting last week for the faculty and staff, and today was just for the students and their parents. We certainly expected, like we all feel, a lot of um, frustration and um, kind of a broken heart that we've arrived at this place. We never wanted to do anything except provide what we believe is a strong liberal arts education through a Christian environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, arriving here with having only 225 students and not a prospect for sustainable enrollment for the fall is just uh, a, a really a business decision, but it's very hard to put a business decision on top of emotions. And the students love it here. Uh, the board loves it. They all volunteer. It's easy to fall in love with this place. So when the students came here, they came for academic purposes. They came for uh, to be with friends. They love the Christian environment. And it's hard. It's very, very hard for all of us, but particularly them, because any kind of change is difficult. And as much as we worked to to sustain it, it just wasn't. Mm -hmm. What kind of solutions could have been made to keep High Lassie open? I think that right now one of the biggest solutions would have been to have dramatically increased our enrollment, which would have been sustainable and would have been important for any kind of accreditation. The other piece that every institution looks at, whether you're at a big UT system or any kind of a land-grant institution or whether you're at a, at a small school like ours, gifts major gifts are always important and for us scholarship gifts were extremely important we had a very small endowment of 2.7 million but only 2.3 of it was for scholarships but that was a very very important part of what it was that we were able to do for our students to recruit them so you you can't spend the corpus of that you can only spend the interest but if we could have grown that endowment that would have made a big difference but we also had just major deferred maintenance and facilities issues that they couldn't be covered through the endowment, but they could have only been covered through unrestricted gifts. And we just simply didn't have any of those to come through. And we're not looking at a couple of hundred thousand or a couple of million dollars. We were really looking at more of about $10 million of things that we knew that we needed to do to be responsible, to finish out the library and to, we needed a new science building and to, make the dorms um, much more livable and um, much more attractive and appealing to be competitive with the other institutions, not just here in East Tennessee, but other choices that the students might have made. Mm -hmm. There have been a lot of questions about financials and that there have been a misuse of financials. What can you tell me about that? There has been a lot of um, question about the misuse of funds. You can't misuse what you don't have. So we have had a we have an external auditor that comes in every single year. We're audited by the Tennessee um, Student um, Accounts uh, uh, Organization. We are, uh, have to follow tracks. We have to follow the um, Council of Higher Education Administration. So that if there would have been any mismanagement of any kind, they would have been able to have note that. But the other important piece is, is, is that it's the enrollment Enrollment always drives an institution, a non-research institution's budget. And even research institutions have to have the enrollment to sustain roof repairs and repaired parking lots and updated cafeterias. And we just simply did not have that enrollment. And that enrollment equals the revenue, and we just simply did not have the revenue. And we had been working hard to try to grow that but we just weren't able to be as competitive as some of the other institutions that can offer greater discounts or um, greater scholarships. Mm -hmm. There have been questions about leadership, specifically you. What do you have to say about that? I have worked um, very diligently with our board, and I certainly want our students and our parents to know that everything that, that I ever did was to help grow the academic programs, to strengthen them, to try to strengthen the campus, every single way that I could to create greater options for them. Um, I just happened to be here at this time, um, and I've given my heart and my soul, and I love this place, but there was never a penny ever misspent on 
you can look at the campus and see that we didn't, or you can talk to any of the faculty and staff. There were never any, what I would even call, strong, really strong salaries. We tried to uh, give discounts to students to be able to recruit them, and the greater the discount, the less funding you have to be able to operate. And that's a hard thing for people to understand. So if, for, if you're charging $20,000 to go to school, but you're, but you're discounting at 25%, and then you, they want more scholarship money on that, it's just, uh, it's just a hard calculus to, un, um, to explain. But the greater the discount, the less money there is to operate. And that's just where we seem to find ourselves. And if Hiawassee College could be accused of anything, I think it's having too much grace for decades and decades of trying to recruit students and keep them here. And in doing so, we were not able to have the funding available to put on new roofs and to build the cafeteria out or to be able to build out our athletic programs. Mm -hmm. Um, there have been questions from alumni. They feel like they've not been given enough time or they didn't get enough notice so that they could step in and help save this place. Twice a year we reach out to all the alumni, all of our previous donors and foundations. So at Christmas, right, well between Thanksgiving and Christmas we make an appeal and traditionally we make an appeal before the end of the fiscal year which is kind of a traditional way that schools go about raising funds. We always do that. The last two appeals that we have made barely paid for themselves. By the time you do the appeal, the magazine, you, you mail it out and you also put it out on social media, it takes time and it does take some money to put it together and it didn't, it barely covered the costs on social media and then to get it out to those individuals who aren't on social media. Some people don't use Instagram and Constant Contact and Facebook and they just like to actually hold a document. So there are some that we had to get out for that purpose and it just simply didn't cover the costs of that at either Christmas or at, um, we haven't done one for the end of this year, but last year we did one in June 30 and then one at the end of the year. What's next for Hiawassee? Um, we're working um, hard to try to find somebody that would be interested in maybe um, resurrecting it, reinventing it perhaps in, in, in a different way. The organizations that with whom we um, have made contact are interested, but they're interested in it for various varying reasons and not necessarily a Christian institution or not necessarily um, simply for higher education, it might be for research or some other means. So we, we have the options on the table at this moment and we're reviewing them and it's up to them to come forth with a proposal to see whether or not they actually have adequate funding to, to do that. Okay. Um, do you guys have any more meetings for parents, faculty, staff, students, alumni, anything right like now, that? Right now, the alumni meeting will be April the 27th. Um, it will be at 11.30, it will be in the cafeteria. Brenda Malone is our Alumni Association President and she's in helping me stay in contact with everyone. Right now we need to focus toward, at the end of the semester on our students and helping our faculty make sure that they finish out the semester very strong. And we're looking forward to getting them through uh, commencement on May 10. If there's a message at the heart of all of this, what could be said about um, how all of this is being handled, all of the questions, all of the frustrations, just like what message is it that parents, students, faculty, staff, alumni need to remember? I believe that we are working as, as quickly and as diligently and as factual as we, as we can to get them the information that they need to help them to move on to those careers and those educational institutions that can provide them with what it is that they need and we stand steady and ready to do that. It's very heartbreaking for us but we are committed to doing that. Uh, for the alumni there is no way that this is easy for a current student, it's not easy for the faculty, it's not easy for the staff, it's not easy for anyone. No one planned to be here. We planned to be at four or five hundred students by now and we just simply could not get there. So if we can be accused of anything, I hope that everyone knows that it's just, we have offered so much grace to so many 
and they they're in our communities right now. They're they're ministers in pulpits. They're teachers in schools. They're pharmacists across the region. We have graduated extraordinary people, and I know that our students are going to go on and do extraordinary things and be leaders in the world also. And I'm so happy about the students that are going to get their degree on their 170th anniversary. And we are going to pray that all the other students that are freshmen, freshmen, sophomores, and juniors are going to do the same. And I know they will because they have strong hearts. Anything I forgot to ask you that you want to add? No, I just appreciate the opportunity that you give me to speak. Thank you. Thank